All right, so 2022's The Fablemans is directed by Steven Spielberg, written by Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner. If you don't know what this film is about, essentially you have Sammy Fableman, who from a very early age grows up loving the art of filmmaking, expresses himself through the art of filmmaking, and uh, just from that alone, that's already the type of movie for me. Um, you know, it's a movie about a movie, kind of, in a way, uh, but... Film is something that I have loved from a very early age myself, so that's, you know, having a character like that is something I can very much relate to. Having somebody who wants to make movies inside of this movie is something I can also relate to. Uh, but on top of that, there's other things that people can relate to in this movie when it comes to, you know, maybe some issues with your family and whatnot, and, um, you know, issues with maybe parents being separated, not being separated, wherever it might be, you know. Um, there's something that a lot of people can relate to in this movie. Um, it's not just about the the filmmaking aspect of of the character of Sammy, because that's really just what it is on face value. Um, what this movie really is, is kind of like a character, maybe not a character study, but just like, you're just spending time with these characters. It's almost like a coming of age story um, for, for Sammy, but also in the background you have this story about... Uh, his mom and dad just kind of having issues with their marriage life and um, them packing up and moving all over the place several times throughout many years and just never really having one place to call home. And on top of that, just other issues that I don't really want to bring up in terms of, you know, spoilers. So I don't want to spoil anything for you guys, but yeah, there's just a lot of things in this movie that people can relate to. There's a lot of a lot of relatable situations in here. A lot of really just common things that, that people have to deal with. Unfortunately, they're bad things for the most part, but people that, you know, things people go through every day. And um, I, I don't know. When it comes to big budget movies, when it has superheroes like Captain America and Iron Man and Thanos and they're all fighting each other and whatnot, um, you know, there are some emotional depths to those movies but it, it never feels personal like this type of movie does this is the type of movie that reminds me why i love movies because it doesn't have to be necessarily building up towards something you're just you're just living with these characters you know with with their day-to-day -day life and experiencing what they're experiencing and and feeling what they're feeling and at times it can be rough but it's real and um, the emotions in here can be raw. But I'm making it sound like a drag. I'm making it sound really, really sad and also maybe a little bit boring. Um, which at times, it, I don't, don't want to say boring, but just a little bit slow. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, the thing I want to say here is that there is actually a lot of comedy in this film. It's not a all-out drama. I mean, there are very serious moments in this movie. There are heavy moments. But I feel like they balance it really well with a lot of really, really well done comedy um, that can almost at times even like subvert your expectations and like, I don't know, sometimes make you feel better in situations where really bad things are happening to these characters. Like something funny ha happens to like not only make the characters feel better, but make you feel better. Um, so again, it makes you feel like you're literally living with them by the way i'm not like wiping my nose it's just super itchy because apparently it always gets itchy when i try to record uh but yeah i only, only mentioned gabriel labelle as sammy fableman in this movie we also have a huge plethora of uh amazing actors in this movie along with michelle williams as mitzi fableman the mother uh, we have paul dano as bert fableman the father uh we have seth rogan as benny lowey uh uncle benny which isn't actually the uncle, but, you know, best friend of the father. Might as well call him uncle. Uh, Seth Rogen in here, I, he doesn't have a whole lot of scenes. He has a decent amount, especially towards the beginning of the film. Um, the thing about Seth Rogen, people see him in a movie and they just immediately expect one thing from him. For the most part, when it comes to the kind of more serious aspects of this movie, um, he, he does do a good job, but for the most part, his character is there to, for the most part, kind of be kind of comic relief. Um, for the little amount of time that he is there. Uh, we also have Keely uh, Karsten. Is that how you say it? Sometimes I can't even read my own handwriting. 
Uh, Keely Karsten as Natalie Hamilton, one of the one of the daughters, one of the sisters, I should say. Uh, we have Julia Butters as Reggie Fimbleman, another one of the sisters. Um, and then there was one other one, but I did not write it down and or they were not credited. So that's some BS. Uh, but yeah, let me see here. We also have Judd Hirsch as Uncle Boris, uh, which is an actual uncle, not, you know, just the best friend of the dad, um, which he's in it for a very short amount of time. But the short amount of time he is in it, uh, his scene his scenes are very impactful so um maybe not impactful in the sense that it's like oh this sweeping monologue that's just gonna like blow people away no it's like this guy's kind of just like spewing off some shit but at the same time he's making some sense but at the same time he's kind of sounding crazy but at the same time like i don't know he's judd hirsch so you're having fun with him so yeah he was fun in the movie for the short amount of time he was in it uh we also have sam retchner is that how you say it as logan hall uh, kind of one of the bullies that, that bullies Sammy at one of the new schools he goes to. Uh, that's, that's pretty much for the most part, the main cast there. Um, but yeah, I mean, great cast when it comes to Paul Dano and Michelle Williams, of course, uh, both of them together while their, their relationship is on the rocks. You can still tell that deep down they love each other and, um, I don't know. They have they have good chemistry with each other for the most part, even though it kind of in the film they're not really necessarily supposed to. Um, but yeah, uh, one of the things I really love about this movie is the amount of times that we just get reaction shots to things. Um, there's one whole scene in this movie where it, it involves Michelle Michelle Williams just watching something uh, that that Sammy made her her character watching something that Sammy made. Um, and we don't see what she's watching. We, you know, the audience knows what she's watching because of context in the film. Uh, but you don't see it at all. And the thing is, we kind of saw a little bit of the footage before, but still. Um, the fact is, we, we just saw, like, a good 30-second clip of just her reacting to this. Maybe even longer. And at times, some people would be like, okay, cut. Let's get to the next thing. But for me, I love those, those drawn-out moments that it just lets the actor just do their thing. It shows that an actor knows what they're doing when they can tell an emotion with just their face. Um, which you're thinking, oh, if I'm sad, I can just make a sad face. It's so easy. But no, like, if you really try to do it the way these people do it, you're you're going to end up looking goofy. These people pull it off brilliantly. Michelle Williams, fantastic in this movie. Paul Dano, absolutely fantastic in this movie. Um, honestly, the real big standouts for me are the three main actors here, Gabriel LaBelle, Michelle Williams, and Paul Dano, but a lot of other really great actors in this film as well. Um, but yeah, there's, this movie is definitely going to get a lot of awards. I'm saying that already. Um, I, I feel like it's probably going to win or not win. I'm getting ahead of myself there. Uh, but I feel like it will get nominated for best picture. Um, I feel like Paul Dano will most likely get nominated for best actor would he technically be supporting actor in this movie i don't know uh would gabriel labelle be nominated at all i would hope so because he was fantastic in this movie um for an actor and i forgot to look into uh any other stuff that he's done but uh for an actor that i am not familiar with he was absolutely incredible in this film and i will absolutely have to see what he's doing next um but yeah, he was fantastic in this movie. Even the young version of uh, of Sammy that they had in this movie played by Matteo Zorian. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, yeah, we get a little bit of him early on. And that actor, like, I think he's only been in two things, including this movie. And he was fantastic. Like, oh my God. Just in the beginning when he's watching that movie and like shit's about to go down. I, I don't know if he necessarily stands up or if he's on the edge of his seat. But that moment there, I was just like, oh, this kid's going places. I can see it in his face. This kid has acting chops. Um, but yeah, there's like moments later on where they're talking about, um, you know, how they don't have any Christmas lights on their, their house because they're Jewish. Um, and it's just moments like that I love. Just kind of getting to know the family in in really uh what's the word i'm looking for uh organic ways because in a lot of movies there's so much exposition exposition explaining things about the characters 
uh, just to like give the audience information about the characters. And it feels so unnatural. They're like, oh yeah, that's that one guy that does that one thing. But it's like, you should know that because you've been here the whole time. You should know who that one person is. You're literally just doing this for the audience. But um, no, and here, like, whenever they they say stuff about the characters, you know, it's, uh, and I'm kind of losing my train of thought here, but it feels like it has purpose, I guess. Any any information we get about them, it feels organic. Honestly, all the, the lines in here, all the the writing feels organic. It feels real. It feels like an actual family and it feels like an actual family going through actual difficulties and, and fighting with each other at times and saying things that they're going to regret to each other and having those really difficult moments. But, um, I don't know, man, I'm kind of rambling at this point because it is really late right now. I've tried recording this so many times. I don't know how good this review is. Probably not a really great review for the movie, but, uh, if you guys get the chance to watch this movie in a theater in UU, I would uh, I would definitely recommend doing so. Um, is it going to be one of my favorite movies of this year? I think it'll at least get an honorable mention. Uh, but for the most part, I feel like most of my favorite movies of the year have already kind of been kind of been set in stone for the most part. Uh, but this one will at least get an honorable mention. Maybe if I get the chance to watch it one more time before the year ends, it will end up on that list. Uh, because I think after watching this movie one more time, I will appreciate it more. Uh, it's just that first watch, I was like, this movie feels a little bit longer than it needs to be. It's about an hour and 30-ish minutes with credits. Um, so it's quite a long movie. And there's a lot in there I feel like they probably could have cut down. And especially towards the end there, it kind of felt like they didn't know to, when to say stop. Um, and, and they left things on a note where it's like, okay, if you don't really know where uh, where this is going... And I don't even know if I said this, you know, I'll say that for the very end in case I didn't say it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they leave things kind of open in the end where it's like, okay, you can kind of see where this is going from here. And you can see, like, knowing what we know about this character, uh, we should know. We should know uh, where they're going next. So, I don't think I said this in the beginning. I've been recording for 12 minutes. I've re-recorded this so many times and I've said this so many times. So I don't don't know if I said this in this recording. Uh, but Sammy Fableman in this movie is essentially supposed to be a young version of Steven Spielberg. Um, I'm sure there are things in this movie that are kind of fabricated and made up for the film for the sake of entertainment. Uh, but for the most part, this is about his childhood, about his family, and about his love for filmmaking and how how it started and how it grew over the years and, and how he got to where he is now. Um, so yeah, I, I think that alone makes it worth a watch because without that context, you don't really know that it's essentially a biopic about a director. So um, yeah, and it's a very tasteful biopic. It's done where they change the name of the uh, the main character and don't make it the same as as the person who's, uh, who's writing it and directing it. Um, yeah, I mean, this is how they do a, a biopic right. You just make it not seem like a biopic, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this film does a lot of things right. Um, and it does very little wrong, in my opinion. Uh, but it's still one of those movies that there's just something that I'm a little hung up on and I'm not quite sure what. Uh, but again, after watching it one more time, I'm sure I'll figure out what that is and maybe I'll figure out that it's not really an issue for me. Uh, I guess there's just some kind of character things that I didn't fully understand, but also, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to try to explain what I didn't quite like about it because I'm not really sure. And sometimes I'm just not sure about that kind of shit. Uh, but yeah. I mean, still really very much worth watching um, and highly recommend watching it in the theater if you get the chance. Uh, but yeah, if you don't get the chance to watch it in the theater, I think it will be available on Peacock within the next like two to three months. I know that's quite a while to wait, but hey, I mean, that's the sacrifice you're going to have to make if you can't watch it in the theater. So uh, yeah, definitely recommend this one. Uh I don't have my movie ranking or my, uh, yeah, my movie ranking system list nearby. So I'm just going to give this a, a one out of 10 kind of score. Uh, for the most part, I think I am going to give this movie an 8.5 out of 10. It's a very great movie. I'd highly recommend. Uh, but I am again, hung up on some stuff that I just 
quite don't quite know what they are. Um, I don't know if you you guys have ever felt that way. You've watched something and you have some issue with it and you just don't quite know what it is. Um, but for the most part, it does a lot right, like I said. So uh, I'm gonna, I already, I already said my ranking. Again, I'm very tired right now. I'm ready to go to bed like right after this. Uh, I regret starting the movie or going to the movie so late. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, have you seen the Fablemans? What did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you in the middle? Uh, I definitely very much love this, this movie, um, from somebody who loves movies and the art of filmmaking. Uh, this feels like a movie that was made for me. So yeah, uh, if you can relate, definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, have you not seen the film? Do you, uh, do you plan on watching it? Why or why not? I'd love to know down in the comments below. Really anything you want to comment down below, I'd love to hear. And for the most part, uh, usually I do respond to all my comments. So yeah, there's that. Uh, but yeah, leave a like on the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload, and I will see you in the next one.